I'm doing this problem, when I'm going to be dealing with substitution, I want to solve this by substitution. All right, so when I want to solve this problem by substitution, what I'm going to do is, remember, I'm going to have to isolate a variable, right? I need to know what one of my variables equals. I either need to know x equals something or y equals something. Now, previously, when we've done substitution problems, um, it was very easy because we said x equal this or y equal that, right? But if we look at this problem, do we have x equals or y equals anywhere? Does anybody say it? No. So what we need to do for this problem is we need to manipulate one of the equations or change one of them so that one of them equals or x equals something or y equals something. So our next big choice is we need to decide what do we solve for? Do we solve for x or do we solve for y? Well, that's really going to depend on what we're given. <clears throat> and let's kind of forget about the top equation right now. I always like to cover that up. If I just looked at 3x minus 5y equals negative 1, and I said, what do you think would be easier, to solve for the x or to solve for the y? Um, y. You guys might, some of you might say x, maybe some of you might say y. And I'm here to tell you, and some of you might say I can't see it at all. But what I'm here to tell you is they're roughly going to be about the same, you know, give or take, depending on how you order your numbers. But if you guys notice, to solve for x, I need to subtract 15y, and then I need to divide by 3, which is two steps, right? To solve for 15, I need to subtract 3x to the other side and divide by 15, which again is two steps. So really, solving for x or y on the bottom equation is really kind of about the same for both sides. However, if we look at the top equation, what do you think is going to be easier, the x or the y? And if you guys look at it, if the y, you have to get rid of the x and then you have to divide by 5. But the x is already by itself. So, I mean, as far as not being multiplied or divided by numbers. So, therefore, all you simply need to do is so put the 5y to the other side and you just solve for x. Does that make sense? So, Why when you guys are you doing, when you're doing substitution, it's helpful to look for the variable that's by itself, meaning it's being multiplied by number, only being multiplied by number one. You don't need to divide. That's what I'm saying. That's why you want to solve for x. If you had to solve for y, you'd have to divide by 5, right? Because you need to undo your multiplication of 5. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay? So if I want to do this problem, if I want to solve for x, x e I'm sorry, x plus 5y equals 4. To solve for x, I subtract 5y. So therefore, I have x equals negative 5y plus 4 or whatever, it doesn't matter, 4 minus 5y, however you want to write it. So now, what you guys have is you have x equals negative 5y plus 4, okay? So therefore, my, my value of my x equals negative 5y plus 4. I can plug that in, or what we like to call substitute that in for the x of my other equation. So now I have... 3 times negative 5y plus 4 plus 15y equals negative 1. So you see what I did? Okay. Then, whenever we have a number that's multiplied by your parentheses, that's why when you substitute in, guys, put them in parentheses because it's going to help when you have a multiplication problem. You'll remember to do distributive property. 3 times negative 15 is a negative 15y, 3 times 4 is a positive 12, plus 15y equals negative 1. <laughs> now we can combine our like terms. So I have negative 15y plus 15y. That's going to equal 0y plus 12 equals negative 1. I don't have any y there. So my final answer I get is 12 equals negative 1. I have nothing to solve for, right? I can't find the x or I can't find the y. So if we were to think about this with graphing, remember guys, the system, the solution is where the two lines intersect, right? There's an x coordinate and a y coordinate, correct? Right? Mm -hmm. Well, if you guys look at here, do we can we solve for x or solve for y? No. Our y's and our x's canceled out, right? It got multiplied by zero. Yeah. So guess what? These two these two lines don't have an intersection point. So this is what we call no solution. And also, you can tell that because 12 does not equal negative 1, does it? That is false. So therefore, 
this is no solution. And what two lines don't intersect? Does anybody remember those two lines that don't intersect? Parallel. Parallel, Parallel lines. Very good. Yes? Do you all at work you find out that they just don't cross? <laughs> no solution. Yep. We did all that. We just to figure it out. There is a, there is a you know another way that we can work on it, but I'll I'll go I'll leave that for a little bit later Jackson. But um, yeah, so you just want to follow the process. The main important thing, Rosalind, that I wanted you to understand is to solve for x, so you can do substitution like you guys did in one through ten. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's about it. Question? No. All right.